If you've been missing cinnamon rolls since having to go gluten-free, the wait is over. Gluten-free cinnamon rolls are tender, sweet, and seriously perfect. You'll make this recipe for years to come. Hey, it's Kristen from Iowa Girl Eats, where we make easy gluten-free recipes using everyday ingredients. Now today we're sharing the most requested video of all time for gluten-free cinnamon rolls. Now these cinnamon rolls are sweet, tender, and best of all, gluten-free. And I'm gonna share with you my best tips and tricks to make sure they turn out perfect for you at home. We're gonna start with a large mixing bowl and I already melted some butter inside. And then we're gonna add milk and you can add plant milk or cow's milk, whatever you have on hand and whatever you usually drink. This is almond milk. And then we're gonna add just a tablespoon of sugar. We're gonna microwave this between 45 and 55 seconds or until it reaches 110 degrees read by an instant thermometer. After the mixture's been heated, give it a stir and you'll want to make sure to stir it up because that will give the thermometer a chance to take a really accurate reading versus if you put it in a cold or a hot spot from the microwave. Our butter and milk mixture has reached 110 degrees, so I'm going to sprinkle on a packet of active instant dry yeast. We'll give this a gentle stir and then we're going to let it sit for about seven or eight minutes or until the mixture is nice and foamy and frothy, which will tell us that our yeast is working. If your yeast isn't foamy and frothy like this, likely the yeast was expired, so make sure to check the expiration date before using it. All right, so we're gonna add one whisked egg to the yeast mixture, and we'll add a little bit more sugar. Obviously, this is a sweet cinnamon roll dough, so we'll add a little bit of sugar and then just give that a stir. I think a lot of people are intimidated by recipes using yeast, but truly you can see it's as simple as adding it to a bowl, heating, and then stirring. Truly there is nothing intimidating about this recipe. Next we're gonna move on to our dry ingredients. So I have a bowl of gluten-free all-purpose flour, and you wanna make sure that the flour blend that you choose has a binder like xanthan gum already mixed in. That'll keep the rolls together and nice and flaky and tender. So to the flour, I'm going to add baking powder. This will make sure that our cinnamon rolls are nice and light and fluffy, and just a pinch of salt. And then I'll whisk those together. We will add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients in two batches. So I'm gonna add half here, just sprinkle that in. This is a great recipe too because you don't need a stand mixer, you just have a large bowl and a spatula. So I will mix that in, half of that. And it's okay if there's little lumps, it's no big deal. Stir that until it's combined. Then we'll add our second batch. And give that a stir too. Our dry ingredients are all incorporated into our wet ingredients, so we're just gonna scrape down the sides real nice. And then we're gonna cover the bowl with a tea towel and put it somewhere warm to rise for 30 to 40 minutes until it has doubled in volume. So I'll cover it up. And then I like to use my oven set to the bread proofing setting, which is about 90 to 100 degrees. I've used a heating pad before. Certainly you could just put it in a warm corner of your house, anywhere that's just a little bit warmer than room temperature. Our dough has doubled in size, so we can move forward with pressing it out. I have a sheet of parchment paper that I sprayed with nonstick spray, and I just put it on a baking mat just to prevent any slipping or sliding. And I like to use these pre-cut sheets of parchment paper it's so nice to have a nice guide as to how thin or thick to press your cinnamon rolls. So I've already sprayed it, and then I'm just gonna turn our risen dough out on top and use a spatula to help me do it. And if this is your first time making gluten-free cinnamon rolls, the texture of this dough might be a little alarming. When I was testing this recipe, I, was, I just couldn't get past the, the fact that I'd be pressing out the dough instead of stretching it, but trust me, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like and it's gonna turn out great. All right, so we have our dough on the parchment paper and I'm just gonna spray it with nonstick spray. It is a little sticky and that's all right. We're gonna spray our hands too. And then we're gonna get to work pressing. And like I said, you're just gonna press this into an even layer about 10 inches by 14 inches. And one of my best tips for making these cinnamon rolls is to make sure you don't press the dough too thin. Otherwise it can kind of rip and tear. 
So again, 10, 10 by 14 is what we're going for. And I actually like to take a Sharpie and make guides on the edges of my parchment paper so I know how far out to press my dough. You know, gluten-free, uh, when I had to go gluten-free, giving up cinnamon rolls was really hard emotionally. Uh, cinnamon rolls were, and they have always been a big part of my family's holiday traditions, and you know, it's just hard giving up cinnamon rolls. They're amazing. And so, after I developed this recipe, it was like Christmas morning taking my first bite. It was just so, so happy, and such an emotional thing, believe it or not. Um, and so I'm really excited for you guys to try these at home, too. Next, we're going to spread softened butter on top of the dough. You cannot have ooey gooey cinnamon rolls without lots of butter. I never said this was a healthy recipe. <laughs> it's important to make sure that your butter is truly softened. I like to let mine soften to room temperature and then give it a zap in the microwave for just a few more seconds. You don't want it liquid, but you do want it very, very soft so it doesn't tear the dough. And we'll just spread that all over the dough and we want to leave about an inch at the bottom clear of any butter because that is where we'll pinch the dough together when we roll it up in a little bit. All right, it's time to go wash these hands before we move on to the next step. Next, we're going to make the cinnamon sugar filling. And so I just have regular granulated sugar and I'm going to add cinnamon. And we'll give that a stir. Then we will just sprinkle it on top. And again, you want to get a nice, even coverage on all of the cinnamon rolls except for that bottom inch. You want to keep that clear. This will seem like an excessive amount of sugar and cinnamon, but trust me, every drop counts and you will truly taste it in the final cinnamon roll. Now it's time to roll. So this is why working with a piece of parchment paper is really important because you're just going to lift the ends and pull towards you to start the dough rolling. And then you're just gonna keep lifting and it'll roll upon itself. When you have one roll left, lift the bottom of the parchment paper so the dough sits in the center of the paper. Then pinch the seams together to close. Next, we're going to use a serrated knife to slice the log into 12 equal slices. I like to start in the center and just use a nice sawing motion. And then you can wipe off your knife with a paper towel in between cuts. We'll cut the log into four equal pieces and then cut each piece into three rolls. Next, we're gonna transfer the slices into a non-stick sprayed nine inch pie pan. And it's okay if your slices are a little soft. I like to use the knife to kind of scoop up the slices and transfer them into the pie pan. We've transferred all of our slices into the pie pan. So we're gonna set this in the same warm place to rise for another 30 to 40 minutes until they're nice and puffy. It's been about 30 minutes and you can see our rolls are nice and puffy. No one will ever know if they didn't look so pretty going into the pan. So we're gonna bake these for about 16 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees. And I do like to give the pan a 180 degree rotation in the middle of the baking time, just to make sure everything is even and brown and perfect. While the rolls cool, we're gonna make the icing that we're gonna spoon and drizzle on top. And I know that a lot of you love your cream cheese icing on cinnamon rolls, and I do too but I want you to try this simple four ingredient recipe just once. It's buttery, it's smooth, it's sweet, and it is irresistible with these cinnamon rolls. So I just have a bowl of powdered sugar and I'm going to add softened butter. And again, make sure this is room temperature and then I like to zap it for a few seconds in the microwave just to make sure it's really, really soft. And then we're gonna add hot water, just a drizzle, and that'll help melt the butter. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And that's it. So we'll stir this together till it's nice and smooth and then it'll be ready to drizzle on the cinnamon rolls. Our cinnamon rolls have cooled down just a little bit so it's time to spoon this luscious icing on top. Whether you're new to the gluten-free lifestyle or it's been years since you last had a cinnamon roll, these gluten-free cinnamon rolls are going to blow your mind, I promise you. They're gonna become a staple for weekends, holidays, anytime you're craving something sweet. Let's take a bite. These rolls are nice and tender, almost biscuity. And that icing, I'm telling you, give it a try. Mm, perfect. Sweet and cinnamony, these are everything you want in a classic cinnamon roll made gluten-free.